Now that I have owned this San Martin SN0121 for a few months, I can safely say that it is one of the best watches I've experienced from AliExpress, and it is the best San Martin watch I've experienced. Hello, you're watching James. My name's James, you're watching me, and I am talking about watches. And when I talk about watches and when I buy watches, I buy what I like. I buy watches that stand out to me that I think I really want in my collection. And I don't really worry too much about where they come from. Some of them are from AliExpress, some of them are from Japanese brands, some of them are from micro brands, some of them are Swiss watches. That's actually not the main reason for buying a watch. I buy them because I like them. And this San Martin, this one stood out to me, so I wanted to own it. And after now owning it for a few months, I can safely say that it is a really, really nice watch. It has really impressed me. And that says a lot for San Martin for me because every San Martin watch that I've had has been impressive. There's been certain levels of how impressed I've been, but there's certainly some that are incredible. This one is definitely the best one that I've experienced. Now I chose the no date blue variant of this one because it's the one that I like the most. But you can get this one also with a date and also different colors, black and green, and I think that is fantastic, and it's fantastic to have those options. And if you do want to buy one, they're around about 360 Australian dollars. Of course, when it comes to AliExpress watches, sometimes it's worth waiting for a sale because you might get it a little bit cheaper. But what I'm gonna do is I'll leave an affiliate link down below so that you can go directly to the store that I purchased this watch from, and you can feel free to buy one yourself. If you do use that link, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. And guys, whilst you're there, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, would you mind just clicking on that little subscribe button? It does make a huge difference to me and this channel. For now though, I want to show you the San Martin watch and I want to show you in a little bit of detail because there is something rather special about it. To do that, let's flip the camera. Now it did surprise me that this San Martin, the SN0121, came with the old style San Martin packaging. But it comes with all the other stuff as well that you would expect. This one's also powered by the Seiko NH35, has sapphire crystal, AR coating, 300 meters of water resistance, and quite interesting, it has a ceramic bezel insert. And after I've sized it to my 17 centimeter wrist, I've been left with three spare links. And as you'll see shortly, it's a very, very good looking watch, but it's also the dimensions that have really grabbed my attention because the case itself is 38 millimeters, but the bezel overhangs slightly, making it 39 millimeters. The width of the watch is 12.8 millimeters, a 47 millimeter lug to lug, 20 millimeter lug width, and on this bracelet with those three links removed, it is 141 grams. There are three things about this watch that I think make it so special. Those dimensions, the looks, and the quality. So let's zoom in on the dial to check out the looks of this watch because you'll see that that blue dial, firstly, it's a beautiful color blue, including also that inner chapter ring. But There's a very slight textured surface to it. You don't really notice it normally, but under this zoom, you definitely see that. And those applied markers, they have a real 3D effect to it, and they're inset into that chapter ring, which I think gives it a really interesting element to the looks of it. It would be great if they were full blocks of loom, but they're not, of course. This is still a relatively affordable watch, so they're blocks of, of, of uh, indices, I guess, with then loom infilled onto the top of them. Now shift your attention to the hands, because obviously this is a very uh, Tudor-like looking handset with that sort of snowflake hour hand, pencil minute hand, and that little square on the second hand as well. But look past the design, but look at the quality and the finishing of it, because the majority of the hands are white with lots and lots of loom inside, but the center part of those two main hands and the counterbalance on the second hand is blue, which gives it a real sort of interesting effect. It almost looks like the hands are floating over that dial, which I really like, and I think it really gives a interesting visual element to this particular watch. And, and while we're looking at these hands and those indices, let's look at the loom of this watch, because San Martin does a good job at loom, and this watch, it really demonstrates how good they can actually do loom. There's a little bit of printing on the dial as well. You'll see the minute track up there beyond that chapter ring. The logo itself is printed on in white, automatic 300 meters. 
Covering that dial is a piece of double dome sapphire crystal, which definitely has a little bit of AR coating going on there. You can see in the studio lights that you can still see through it very easily. But it is a very subtle dome and it doesn't really stand out too much, which means it's blending into the watch nicely, which is actually really really cool because it then gives you the element of the dial versus seeing that crystal but let's look beyond that because one of my other favorite features of this watch is this ceramic bezel insert and i like it because of the color because of the matte texture that it has and i think it just suits the color matching of the dial so well that it really lifts it. If this was a, a shiny sort of sapphire insert, I don't think it would suit it. I think if it was an aluminium insert, it'd look okay, but this ceramic material choice is perfect. Everything you can see on top of it is printed on there as well, so it's nice and soft. It has a nice coin edge to it, and it is a 120 click unidirectional, and it is a really nice bezel action. Very easy to use, but you're not going to knock it, and it's nice and locked in there, so you're not going to get any back play, which is nice to see, and is something that I pretty much expect from San Martin watches. Now, the case in the bracelet is mostly brushed, and it's brushed really nicely. It's exactly what I'd hoped for from a San Martin. It's exactly the sort of quality that I have experienced before from them. So that's good. That sort of met my expectations and is exactly what I'm hoping. But there is a touch of polish. There is a high polish chamfer edge, which just gives you that little bit of pop. And that sort of transitions down onto the edge of the bracelet, which is also polished, which is quite nice. But that's actually not the thing that stands out to me about this case as much as the solid end links and how they fit into the case. Because let's turn the watch like this and just have a look at how perfect those end links and that case go together. In fact, if you run your finger or your thumb across that, you can't feel the transition. It's probably the best fit of an end link into a case I've ever come across before. From cheap watches, medium price watches, or even much, much more expensive watches. That is an incredible standout feature of this particular watch. But let's move on because we've got a semi-guarded crown. It is signed with the San Martin logo. It is screwed down. Obviously, it says 300 meters, so you do expect that. Now, slightly disappointing to me is they've gone with the Seiko NH35. I'm not disappointed with the movement. I like Seiko movements, especially in this sort of price range watch. But obviously, I've got the no-date variant of this one, so I've got a ghost position, which is a shame because a lot of the San Martin watches, they will go the NH38 for the no-date, but this one they've chosen not to. But I guess it doesn't really matter because you don't really notice it too much. The good part about it is it's a good movement, and it also does hack. I do always like, however, seeing how each individual movement does perform. So let's stick this Seiko movement on the time grapher. So I've very rarely been disappointed by a Seiko movement. Sometimes there's a little bit of variation in beat rate, beat error, amplitude. But as you can see with this one, it's running extremely well. 20,600 vibrations per hour, zero beat error, mid 200s amplitude, and running just under zero. In fact, quite often, it seems to be sitting on zero. So I'm very happy with those results from the San Mun, but also from this Seiko NH35 movement. All right, I've already spoken more than enough about these end links. Let's talk about this bracelet a touch more. All brushed, starting at 20 millimeters, tapering down to 16 millimeters, so it gives a really nice on wrist feel. It is a three link, but is actually a one link. It's one of those kind of styles. Has screw pins there, all brushed, polished on the sides. And then it comes to this new San Martin clasp, which I have to admit, I like. I think it's a good sort of clasp, well made, brushed logo, brushed on the sides, double trigger, interior is all milled, and it has this on-the-fly adjustment. The only problem I have with it is that I think it might be a touch too big for this watch. If this was a sort of a 41mm diver, I think it would fit 
perfectly. It would sort of contrast the style of watch well, but because it's a slightly smaller diver, it just feels a tiny bit big. However, that's only when you're holding the watch like this. When you're actually wearing it, you don't really notice that as much. It sort of does balance out the watch nicely, so it sits on wrist nicely. It just feels a little bit big when you're sort of doing that. But perhaps I am being a little bit picky there. You can see past that it has a very simple case back as well. And as soon as you are getting this one on wrist, it is a very nice on wrist experience. This is it on my six and three quarter or around about 17 centimeter wrist. This really is probably one of the perfect size watches for my wrist. So anything that has these dimensions, I kind of already know that it's going to look good. But this one definitely does look good and feels nice on wrist. Nicely balanced too. Now, I've already mentioned that I think this is the best Sand Martin watch that I've experienced, and that is very, very true. But what does that actually mean when I start looking at it in depth about what do I like about it, what don't I like about it, and is actually there anything that I would change about this one? But let's talk about likes, because there's a few. Obviously, quality, size, and feel on wrist is excellent. I do like the look, but let's look closely. That dial texture how those those markers fit into that internal chapter ring. I like how there's the blue and white on the hand, so they sort of end up floating. That ceramic basil insert, it is a standout. Great clicking action. Those, how it transitioned from that sort of end link into that case is the best that I have ever seen. So there's lots to like. Taper on the bracelet stands out, making it a really nice on-wrist experience. And I think it's priced well. I think it's the right price for me, for a San Martin, but it ends up being a right price for a watch that is beyond good. Doesn't mean it's perfect, however. It is a shame that it has that clasp. Perhaps I'm concentrating on that too much, but I guess if I am looking at it carefully, and if there is anything to point out, I probably would have preferred one of the older San Martin clasps, which perhaps doesn't have the sort of on-the-fly adjustment, but I think it would have suited the watch a little bit more. And I definitely would have changed that if I had that opportunity. And of course, it'd be great to also have the no-date variant NH38. But let's talk about that price a bit more. I've mentioned it a few times, but let's talk about that in a little bit more detail. Let's get back to me. So at about 360 Australian dollars, for me, that seems to be the sort of right sort of money to spend on AliExpress. I think at that sort of 300-ish Australian dollars, you can get the best watches on AliExpress. I've definitely found some cheaper that are incredible. I've definitely found some more expensive ones that are incredible. But this, it feels right to me. And when I picked this one up at that sort of price, it felt right to me. I kind of expected it to be a good watch. I kind of was happy with the price. But when it actually landed on my doorstep, it did surprise me. And being surprised surprised me as well because I expected it to be good. But I didn't expect to like it as much as I do. So that price tag, that 360 Australian dollars, felt even better once I got hands on this watch. And as usual, when it comes to AliExpress watches, especially San Martin watches, it becomes very difficult to find another watch for the same sort of money that is as good, or at least feels like the bargain that it is. That doesn't mean there aren't other watches out there on AliExpress and not on AliExpress. But I think if you're spending this sort of price range and you like this design, then it is definitely one that is worth considering. It's also worth considering watching these videos next.